So somehow he managed to get his leg caught in the PTO. He busted his foot and his leg. This was the first part I ever bought for the tractor. You know, sometimes you think that you've heard uh, all the stories you've heard from all your relatives, but you know, recently I heard a crazy story about my great grandfather that I didn't know anything about. Look at this mess. You guys want to hear a story about grandpa? Good morning, biscuit. How's it going? How are you guys doing in here? How's it going there, Red? Yeah, you're looking good. It is so nice and sunny out, and you guys are just going to hang out in here all day. Go outside. Play. Look at the mess you guys made over here. Holy cow. It's like sloppy. Really sloppy. So apparently in the winter of 1946, my grand, my great grand, let me start again. Slipping and sliding out here. So apparently in the winter of 1946, uh, my grandfather, my great grandfather, even more specifically, was working out on the farm. And uh, he used to always, um, when he'd plow and everything, he'd use a team of horses. Well, by the 1940s, he wasn't using horses anymore, he was using a tractor. So he was out picking corn with the tractor with an old corn picker. He was using the PTO off of the tractor in order to run the corn picker. And I'm not sure what kind of tractor he had. My talked to my uncle and he said that when when he was a kid my great-grandfather had a couple of different tractors that he ran uh, he had a case and uh, I think he said he had a all right calm down well you got yourself up there now how are you gonna get down so he had a case and uh, he had a farm all uh, which pretty cool tractors uh, it, mine's a Ford but uh, those are some pretty cool tractors. I'd love to own some of those too as well. And according to my grandmother, his daughter, he had an international harvester also before that. So that might've been the tractor that he was using while he was out there. So somehow he managed to get his leg caught in the PTO, which ended up busting his foot and his leg. Here, let me show you how this works exactly. So you got this deal here on the back of the tractor. When the tractor's running, that thing's spinning. And uh, there's a shutoff switch over here. So this lever here under the seat moves forward and backwards to turn it on or off. And that runs the hydraulics in the rear end. So you'd have to shut that off in order to get it to stop. But once it's running, there's nothing that stops that thing from turning. If you get sucked into that, you're gonna lose limbs or worse. That's why I said this was one of the first purchases I made for the tractor was this cover. Cover that up. I don't use the the PTO for anything other than running the three-point hitch on it so I can put this cover right over the top of that and never have to worry about anybody getting into, injured. And uh, he was about a mile away from the farm at the time. Have you seen Deuce? I haven't seen him yet this morning. Huh? Where'd he go? So anyways, he gets his leg caught in the tractor and, uh, and shuts the PTO off uh, somehow. I, I don't really know the details to that. Unfortunately, my great-grandparents passed away when I was in my teens. Uh, so I can't ask them about it, but I do know that my great-grandmother actually heard the noise from the house And so she knew something had happened, which is pretty crazy and uh, Anyways grandpa he he uh, he managed to get himself back on the tractor And he drove a mile all the way back to the farm with a busted foot and a busted leg to where he met up with my great-grandmother and uh, his brother and uh, they got him in the car to bring him to the hospital and, um, and his brother asked him, is there anything I can get for you? And he said, all the thing, the only thing he wanted was a cigarette at the time. So, but that's pretty crazy. I can't imagine having a busted foot and a busted leg and getting on the tractor and driving the tractor all the way back into the farm and, and, uh, and then sitting down in the car. And the only thing that you ask for is a cigarette. You're going to make me an egg today. I think you are. Let's take a look and see if you've made any eggs so far. Ooh, you're making an egg. 
Make it a good one, will you, please? All right, appreciate it. Uh, not seeing any more eggs. Maybe the kids came out and grabbed them. Yeah, there's been a lot of guys throughout the years that have been really badly injured with tractor PTOs and equipment. and That's some really dangerous stuff. I know when I'm running the tractor, I'm really, really cautious and have had dozens, if not hundreds of conversations with the children that when I'm on the tractor, you, you're nowhere near me. So make sure they stay away and, and I know where they're at. But, but yeah, them old guys back in the day, those guys were tough. Tough guys out there on the farm. It's tough life too. Yeah, that, I can't imagine what that'd have been like to be there that day. Thankfully, I only ended up with a busted foot and a busted leg out of the ordeal. But anyways, it's pretty crazy because the story goes on. He went to the hospital and he's in the hospital and, and my grandpa, he, uh, he kind of was a jokester a little bit. So when he was in the hospital, they, uh, they had, were, there was a thermometer in there. They were taking his temp or something and he thought it'd be funny. So he, uh, he lit a match and, and lit that thermometer get up a little bit and got the temperature way up to play a prank on the nurse. I'm sure that was pretty funny. You guys are so indecisive. Pick a direction and just go that way. Yeah, and come on, Lucky, let's get going. You know, then in later years when I knew him, he walked around with a cane. I never really gave it much thought as a kid, you know. Old guys, they just kind of walked around with canes, I guess. So uh, it kind of dawned on me after I learned this story here not long ago that, well, he, that probably that busted foot and that busted leg, you know, that probably wore on him as he aged, and, and that's what caused him to walk with a cane. So, but, uh, but man, he was such a good guy. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough to know him into my early teens and spent a lot of time with him. Um, he was a tough old farmer, but the sweetest guy ever. Never saw him upset, you know, only smiles. Um, boy, that's a, that's a good life lived, I think, um, for him. And, uh, and, you know, something to definitely aspire to, to be more like. I, I know that, you know, a lot of times I, I get upset about the small things and, and really shouldn't. And, I should think about my ancestors more and what they went through and how much tougher their life life was than, than mine. So anyways, um, thanks for listening to the story. Uh, I hope to tell a lot more stories like this. My, my mom told me that she's got a whole box of stuff for me from relatives and I'm super eager to go through it here in the next week or two, hopefully. But if you enjoyed this video uh, check out some of our other content uh, I'll leave a video right here for you guys to check out and uh, thank you for watching have a wonderful day we'll see you next time thank you